It took them a while, but the Atlanta Hawks finally admitted that they made a horrific mistake that potentially sabotaged their entire team. And there may be a way out of this, but they have to figure out how to navigate this situation quickly, because if they lose this player for absolutely nothing, then it could reset their potential rebuild even further, and they could lose their existing franchise cornerstone. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Make sure you check our channel members program so you could get some of our content a little earlier and now that we get all that out of the way cue the intro We made $1,100 off of a $20 entry on prize picks. And it wasn't just me, it was everyone that followed these picks on my Instagram story. And the best feeling is the amount of people that made money as a result of this. I mean, bam, bam, bam. Man, my DMs were flooded, so the best part for me was seeing you guys make money as well. But we're not done yet. If you haven't signed up for prize picks, use my promo code microphone to double your deposit up until $100 on prize picks. And I give away my picks on a daily basis for free on my Instagram story and now my Snapchat story. Mud check 1212. What's going on, everybody? I credit the Atlanta Hawks for having one of the most impressive rebuilds in NBA history. This team was the top ranked team in the East. Eastern Conference in the 2015 season, finished fourth in the 2016 season, and if it wasn't for LeBron James in the 2015 season, they would have made a finals appearance. But following the 2017 season, they would hit the reset button and they would begin their rebuild. And they made a lot of excellent draft picks during this rebuild. Players like John Collins, and then later on, Kevin Herter and Trey Young in the same exact draft. Travis Schlenk, their general manager, was on fire and they didn't stop there. During their rebuilding years, they added Vince Carter just to give fans someone to cheer for. They took chances on DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish. And during the 2020 to 2021 season, they added Danilo Gallinari, drafted Onyeke Okungwu the year before, signed Bogdan Bogdanovich the offseason prior, and even messed around and traded for Clint Capella. All you could ever do when you're in a rebuild is hope that your general manager makes intelligent decisions. And for the Atlanta Hawks, their general manager was making intelligent decisions. Lloyd Pierce didn't get along with Trey Young, so they fired Lloyd Pierce and Nate McMillan ended up taking this team to the Eastern Conference Finals during the 2020 to 2021 season. This team quite literally had the entire New York Knicks screaming f Trey Young. It's a 9-0 New York run to lead by nine with a minute 13 is Trey Young with a wry smile going up top and Hunter misses the reverse. And then following that series, they ended Ben Simmons's career, and then they would lose to the eventual NBA champions in six games, a very respectable season. Clearly, if the Atlanta Hawks play this situation properly, they could set up a potential dynasty. Bogdan Bogdanovich, John Collins, Kevin Herter, and Trey Young were all in their second to third year at that point. The sky was the limit for this roster, and then their owner said, said something that should have made fans a little uncomfortable. You see, the Atlanta Hawks had a plethora of young talent, and Tony Ressler, the owner of the Atlanta Hawks, had no idea what to do about this. Back then, he even said that he didn't know if he could afford to keep this core together, saying it's complicated, of course, because what we're trying to convince people is we're building something, but let's not kid ourselves. Our job is to run a good business. What we're trying to achieve is literally keeping our best players, as you could imagine, trying to make clear that we're going to have to spend a lot more than we have this season. We fully expect that. I'm not sure we're going to be able to keep every single player that we want to keep. Pretty good bet. Pretty good assumption we will not. But I do think we have several years that we should be able to build some real stability. If the question is, are we scared of the tax? Are we scared of going into the tax? I'm scared of paying the tax and not being a good team. Yes, that I'm scared of. But if we have to go into the tax to be a great team for a period of time, so be it. For the most part, the Atlanta Hawks ran it back with the 
same core. The consistent theme of the Hawks have been that they're a really good offensive team. In the 2020 to 2021 season, they ranked eighth in the NBA in offensive rating. However, on defense, it's a completely different story. That season, they ranked 21st. Regardless, they ran it back with the same core for the 21 to 22 season. That year, they finished second in offense, but 26th in defense and 14th in overall net rating. And this is despite them having more or less the same core of players returning. But this time, they were a first round exit at the hands of the Miami Heat. Now, throughout the season, there was a ton of drama between Nate McMillan and Trey Young. And clearly, the Atlanta Hawks all agreed on what needed to be done. They needed to figure out a way to boost the team's defensive rating. Now, I may have lied when I said that, because although everyone agreed that the Atlanta Hawks needed to boost their defensive rating, they weren't on the same page as to how that goes down. You see, general manager Travis Schlenk was at odds with the owner's son, Nick Ressler. Nick Ressler was a huge proponent of trying to swing a huge trade in order to improve the team's defense. And the philosophy was that that individual would be DeJounte Murray. And in a trade that would result in the general manager of the Atlanta Hawks eventually resigning, the Atlanta Hawks would trade Danilo Gallinari, three first round picks and a pick swap in order to get DeJounte Murray and Jock Landale. The theory was that DeJounte Murray was an incredible, long, efficient two guard that would slide in perfectly with Trey Young and play off the ball to Trey Young and make sure that the Atlanta Hawks held themselves accountable defensively. The problem was DeJounte Murray's contract really put the Atlanta Hawks in a tough situation. The Atlanta Hawks essentially got two seasons to figure out whether or not DeJounte Murray was going to work out, and they traded three first round picks and a pick swap in order to take this risk. And the worst part of all was following their trade for DeJounte Murray, the team went from number two in offensive rating to number seven in offensive rating the year after, and number 26th in defensive rating to number 22 in defensive rating. Their overall net rating dropped from 14 to 18, 18, which means overall the trade was a downgrade. The worst part of all, in order to add DeJounte Murray onto the team, they needed to trade Kevin Herter to the Sacramento Kings, and all they got in return was Mo Harkless, Justin Holiday, and a future first round pick. But this would just be the beginning of the end of the Atlanta Hawks. Following the 2022 to 2023 season, the Atlanta Hawks also decided to trade John Collins, a player that they were trying to trade for quite some time. And all they received in return for John Collins was a second round pick in Rudy Gay. A player whose value is being built up consistently was traded for scraps at the end of the day. And now the Atlanta Hawks are in huge trouble because although they're not a horrible team by any means, this year they're sixth in offensive rating and 27th in defensive rating for a net rating of 19th, which means they are the third worst defensive team in the NBA. This team isn't even close to trying to achieve the goals that they set out originally. And now they're devoting void of assets. The Hawks are not even a play-in team at the time that we're recording this video, which means the team doesn't really have much of a choice than to hit the reset button, which is really unfortunate considering the fact that they had this incredible opportunity at contention year after year after year, but they made the wrong decisions. They got rid of the players that made their team so good to begin with. They sacrificed their offense for defense theoretically, but at the end of the day, they made both their offense and and defense significantly worse. Which brings us to DeJounte Murray. A lot of people are wondering, how is this DeJounte Murray's fault, Mike? DeJounte Murray has been fairly solid if you look at him statistically. He's averaging 21 points per game this season with 4.6 rebounds, 5.2 assists, shooting 38% from three. What else do you want from him? DeJounte Murray has taken a considerable step back from his days with the San Antonio Spurs, at least defensively. His final season with the San Antonio Spurs included a VORP, which calculates the amount a player contributes above a replacement level. He had a VORP of a 4.4, a OBPM of a 3.7, a DBPM of 1.7. Since getting traded to the Hawks, he hasn't had a DBPM that was positive, and this year he has a negative DBPM, something that he hasn't had since his rookie season. His highest DBPM was a 2.2 in his second season with the San Antonio Spurs. Why? People are speculating that since he doesn't have a head coach that holds him accountable defensively, he's focusing
focusing primarily on offense. So if that's the case, what do the Atlanta Hawks do? There are two teams that make sense for DeJounte Murray. The odds of them recouping any type of capital that's even close to what they traded for him is zero to none because DeJounte Murray's contract expires this year. He's a free agent. He could leave for absolutely nothing. So you're trying to get something in return for him if you believe he is going to leave. And now we get into this gigantic game of chicken between the Los Angeles Lakers, the Toronto Raptors, and the Atlanta Hawks. An analyst proposed this trade. The Lakers would trade D'Angelo Russell, Torian Prince, Max Christie, and a top 10 protected 2029 first round pick. The Hawks would trade DeJounte Murray, DeAndre Hunter, and a 2029 first round pick. And the Raptors would trade Pascal Siakam, Dennis Schroeder, and Garrett Temple. In return, the Raptors would get D'Angelo Russell, DeAndre Hunter, Torian Prince, a top 10 2029 first round pick and a 2029 first round pick from Atlanta. The Hawks would get Pascal Siakam, Dennis Schroeder, and Max Christie, and the Lakers would get DeJounte Murray and Garrett Temple. The problem with this is the Toronto Raptors would never do this. One, because they just made a huge trade. They would want to see if the aspects of that trade would work out with their new pieces. So would Pascal Siakam work with Scotty Barnes and RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly? And Adrian Wojnarowski even discusses this further. And I think initially what you're seeing the Raptors try to do is put a team around Scotty Barnes at 22 years old that fits him age-wise. Siakam is going to be 30 before the end of this season. Uh, he has started to really play very well again. Uh, he's got value around the league, but he's also going to be a free agent. And I think if you're Toronto, if you're not going to re-sign him, you can't let him walk uh, like Fred Van Vliet walked uh, certainly like they lost a uh, Kawhi Leonard. That was a different situation. That was the one-year rental. They won a title. Uh, but I think for Siakam, there's some leverage in that if a team's going to trade for him, they want to know that they can re-sign him, that he'll want to be here. And that's going to dictate how much they might offer Toronto in a deal but I do think there's a window here where the Raptors get to see what Siakam looks like with R.J. Barrett, with Emmanuel Quickly, and this group with the Raptors. But certainly, I think that's going to be a player here we're going to watch uh, over the next month. So with that being said, now the Lakers are essentially waiting to see how desperate the Atlanta Hawks can get. And it's very simple. All DeJounte Murray will have to do in this particular instance is come out and say, okay. I demand a trade because there is absolutely zero chance that I am re-signing with the Atlanta Hawks. So you could trade me wherever, but the only team that I have the slightest chance of signing an extension with is the Los Angeles Lakers. When you do that, you force the Atlanta Hawks hand because then the Atlanta Hawks don't want to lose you for nothing and then the los angeles lakers could potentially create a trade package that is significantly less than what dejounte murray deserves what are the odds of this happening i think there's a decent chance this happens why not because i'm a los angeles lakers fan but because dejounte murray recently signed with clutch sports clutch sports has a history of doing business like this do you remember when anthony davis signed with clutch sports and he said no matter what happens i want to be a los angeles laker hell the new orleans pelicans got the number one overall pick in the 20 2019 NBA draft and still Anthony Davis refused to play for them. Another team that could make sense in this instance is the New York Knicks. However, I do think the New York Knicks are trying to see how OG Ananobi fits in with his brand new roster. If there's a head coach that could get the most out of DeJounte Murray, I believe it's Tom Thibodeau. But let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about all this? Did the Atlanta Hawks make a horrific mistake? Are the Lakers about to trade for DeJounte Murray? Do you think DeJounte is about to go somewhere else? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.